So uh, we will be issuing an order uh, and best guidance in regard to sports. Um, this is really the best uh, guidance that can be provided uh, by the health experts and the medical experts. But the caveat always is that, like anything else in life, it depends on how it, how it is executed. Um, so we would just ask people when this comes out uh, in the next, within the next day, uh, just take a look at it. Uh, kind of go through it, but let me give you the give you the highlights. Um, so we will be releasing this order, and really it's about how uh, we can provide uh, the best advice uh, to how sports in Ohio are conducted. Uh, this includes not only high school uh, athletes, not only uh, situations that are under the Ohio. Uh, uh, high school athletic associations uh, umbrella, uh, but any kind of sports and organized by basically anybody uh, in, in the state. So it applies to all athletes, all teams, uh, whether under this umbrella of the Ohio High School uh, Athletic Association or, or not. Um, we have certainly heard from parents. Uh, we've heard from athletes. Uh, we've talked to uh, young people, uh, coaches, doctors, uh, and, and health experts. Just uh, uh, maybe a kind of a few uh, thoughts about this and kind of our thinking process. Uh, we know, first of all, that just as going back to school in person uh, does increase the risk of spread, uh, we know that sports do, uh, particularly uh, contact sports. Um, they do as well. Uh, further, we know that is. Dr. Borcher said uh, several times, the more spread there is in a community, um, the more spread there's going to be in the school and the higher risk there's going to be um, to the students and, and certainly to the athletes as well. Um, on the other hand, uh, we all know the importance of sports. Uh, we've seen that, Fran and I have seen that with, with our own children. Uh, we've seen it with our own grandchildren. Uh, sports matters, it makes a difference. Um, sports provides all the things that we know. Discipline, brings order, structure in the lives of student athletes, and certainly brings joy to those athletes and certainly to their families as well. Uh, any decision about playing sports or not playing sports simply cannot be made in a vacuum. Uh, that young person, if they're not playing sports, will obviously be doing something else with their time. And that has to be kept in mind as well. Um, we also know, of course, that each young person is different. Each young person has different needs. Uh, each young person is at a different point in their life uh, with different, different needs, uh, different situations. Again, our order provides what we hope is the best guidance to play sports as safely uh, as that can be played in the era of COVID-19. So our, our, our order uh, will provide that all sports uh, may go forward uh, this fall with contact and the non-contact sports. Uh, again, we lay out exactly the roadmap and how this should take place and what has to be done to make it as safe as, as possible. We also though have heard uh, from superintendents, we've heard some from families for a desire uh, to switch some of these contact sports, football, soccer, field hockey uh, to the spring. Um, Lieutenant Governor and I have had conversations with the Ohio High School Athletic Association uh, and they have given the go ahead for schools that want to do that to move to the spring. Um, as we go through this, frankly, we know some schools are still deciding. Uh, some schools have already made up their mind. They've already, already announced. Uh, our goal is to provide, uh, is to focus on the student and to focus uh, on the school and to provide them the best opportunity they can so that that young person can participate. No one can 
guess what the future is going to be. We don't know, frankly, what the situation is going to be or how far into the season we'll be able to get or if we can get all the way into the season, we certainly hope uh, right now. Nor do, can we predict uh, if things will be better uh, when it would become time to play these sports um, in, in the spring. Uh, but this order simply allows sports to move forward. Uh, and we have heard it expressed by some superintendents and others that they would like to be able to have a season, but they don't want to have a season now. We've certainly heard from other schools and other parents who say we want that season now. We think this is the best thing to happen for many, many, many reasons. Um, we have noticed um, that a good number of our urban schools, our city schools, um, have decided not to go back in person, and they've also decided not to have fall sports. Uh, so if there was no opportunity uh, in the spring to play, and again, we can't predict the future. We don't know what that's going to look like, uh, but there is hope, and they will at least have hope, and we hope of actually a season. Uh, they've already made the decision not to play in the fall, so we don't want to exclude those children either. We want to give them the hope and the opportunity to also have a season. Uh, under our orders, uh, let me talk for a moment about spectators. Um, everyone I've, I've talked to, virtually everyone I've talked to, uh, has put the focus exactly where it should be. And that focus should be on young people letting them play. It's also important, I believe, that that young person have someone there, if possible, to support them. There are people there, many times as family members. Sometimes it may be someone else who's very, very close to the family or very, very close to that particular young person. So when our order comes out, what you will see is that we will not have spectators other than, other than family members or people very close uh, to that particular child. And we'll leave that, of course, up to the school, you know, how to do that. Uh, we also know if you talk, for example, football uh, and other sports too, but I associate this with football more, and that is a marching band. Uh, that might be a drill team. That might be other things that happen during halftime. Uh, and so we would want to provide an opportunity for those parents as well to be able to come uh, and observe uh, what is going on. So we'll have more details on that um, when the order is actually issued. But that's the, the basic uh, underpinning uh, in regard to spectators. I think what you'll see when you look at the orders is no big surprises. So the, the health guidance that is in there is pretty much the guidance that you have heard from us, but you've also heard uh, on TV, you, you've read in the newspaper, uh, no, no big, big surprises. Um, I, I would just express a hope. Uh, I have a lot of hopes, but uh, one hope uh, is that the desire to have a season, I hope that the desire to have a season will inspire our young people, our athletes, our student athletes, 24-7 um, to be as careful as they can. And I hope also uh, that our coaches and, and John Houston and I will be uh, talking with coaches uh, later today and several different calls. We're also going to be talking to, to superintendents, athletic directors uh, on conference calls. Uh, but our hope is that the coaches will use this as an opportunity uh, to, to focus uh, on helping these young people uh, understand what really is at stake. Uh, and that if they're going to be able to play whatever sport it is they're playing, whether it is, is soccer, or football, whatever it is, uh, that they're going to have to do everything they can to keep COVID out of their, their team. Um, so I hope, uh, and I believe it will work, uh, the driving force that will inspire our young men, our young women, uh, to make decisions in their lives 24-7. Uh, uh, and I hope that that will inspire them to make the right decisions, to give them the opportunity um, 
to have the best chance they can to play their sport. Uh, to the coaches, uh, you in a normal year uh, inspire, uh, you mentor, uh, you instruct, you instill discipline, self-discipline uh, to your student athletes. Um, for all of that, we're very, very grateful. Uh, parents, grandparents, everybody else connected with that child, we're very grateful for what you do. You make a lot of sacrifices, uh, you work long hours, and you inspire our kids. And so we thank you very, very much for that. But this year, this year, um, it's going to take more. Uh, it's going to be inspiring them uh, in regard to the goal of keeping COVID out.
Up, children who have been signed up for the Imagination Library. So if you've not done so, go on, go online and uh, and do that. So that's good, good, good news. Um, just to conclude, um, success this year in sports is going to be measured always by wins and losses and effort and all the things that we you know, you know measure sports by. Uh, but it's also going to be measured to, certainly to some extent as how well um, we can keep the COVID. Uh, away from the team, away from, away from the athletes. Um, I think by what we're doing today, we're empowering uh, our young people, we're empowering the parents, we're empowering the schools uh, to take all the evidence, all the information, and make the best judgment call for that child, for those children. Um, these are tough, tough calls. 
play contact sports now. Um, play them in the spring. Don't play them. Um, you know, these, these are all um, tough decisions. Uh, there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. Uh, we just ask everyone to, to weigh everything, make the individual best decision for that, for that particular child, for that team, for that, for that school. Uh, what we want to do is give as many options uh, as possible out there uh, for everyone. As uh, Dr. Borchers pointed out, uh, community itself, um, whatever that community is, that's going to, as far as the COVID spread, you're going to see that in the schools. Um, you can take a small rural county, uh, that county can probably look at the numbers and get a pretty good idea what that spread is, get a very good idea uh, what that recent spread is in the community. If you're in a big urban county, uh, you know, much more diverse, many more people, uh, you may have to look at that data more down, more granular, uh, more in regard to the zip code uh, and, and things like that. But this information is there. Uh, and if we can help anybody, uh, superintendents or anyone, you know, dig down into that information, we're, we're more than happy uh, to try to help them. Um, sports uh, is about a lot of things, but one of the things it's about is hope. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what sport it is, uh, hope springs eternal when you, when you start. And um, so that's, we'll end on that, that happy, happy thought. Uh, but I would just say that uh, hope itself is, is not a plan. It's not a strategy. Uh, we all should have hope, but we also should have a plan. Uh, so we would ask you, uh, those who are making the decision to play, uh, we wish you every success in the world. We wish your kids every success uh, in keeping COVID, COVID away. Um, look at the plan we have. Uh, and try the best you can to, to execute that because we believe that gives you the best chance, your kids the best chance of being able to play uh, a season. Uh, let me now turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, John, we're a little delayed getting to you, but uh, we have had a little intermission there. So uh, over to the Lieutenant Governor. Great, thank you, Governor. Uh, I know you've made a lot of decisions uh, in, in your governorship, but. I don't think you've made one that's been more anticipated by teenagers than this one. And uh, I know that uh, hope is a powerful sustaining presence in our lives. And uh, for a lot of student athletes, you've given them a good dose of hope today. So thank you for your decision. Um, look, I know that when we started working on this from the very beginning, coaches and student athletes said, you know, give us a chance, uh, give us a chance to do this. And, and today they have that chance, they have that opportunity. Um, but much like the sport you play, uh, your success is gonna be uh, based on how well you execute the game plan. Uh, athletes, coaches, and families uh, are gonna have to demonstrate the discipline uh, to follow the rules so that they can protect themselves and their teammates and, and control, uh, if not stop the spread of the virus. And, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the things I know we've talked about is that the beneficial one of the benefits, potential benefits of proceeding with sports is that the athletes, coaches and families uh, have that extra incentive, have that extra incentive to make sure that off the playing field, they're doing the right things like wearing their masks and say, staying socially distanced and stopping the spread of the virus. And we hope that this announcement will represent hundreds of thousands of people who have an extra incentive uh, to get this right. And as the governor mentioned, the coaches have an expanded role as educators and leaders in this particular uh, year. Uh, I also want to mention that um, uh, everyone involved must be accountable. Uh, in addition to the health department, the Ohio High School Athletic Association will hold schools athletes and parents accountable. Uh, they will have site inspectors at contests to ensure that the rules are being followed and that the failure to comply with these rules can result in forfeits of athletic contests and disqualification from competition for the season. So uh, the, the accountability and the, and the nature of how we're taking this seriously is, is super important. So 
Uh, when it comes uh, to the coronavirus, we know that there is uh, no right decision uh, and that risk tolerance in your own personal circumstances and your limited alternatives are, are important uh, in any of that decision making. And, and as Dr. Borchers and the governor pointed out, you know, go into this with your eyes wide open, know what you have to do, know what uh, the circumstances are for you and your family. But for the athletes out, out there, uh, here's your chance to play sports, the sports you love, and the opportunity to show us that you possess the discipline to make it work. And we all want you to be successful and healthy. And um, uh, we're excited for the opportunity that you have uh, to, to do this the right way. Governor? Thanks, John. Uh, we're ready for questions.